Recording. Well, hello there, and welcome to my first attempt at doing a uh, FaceTime live video for the Doctor Who Target World podcast. Uh, we hope you enjoy this and watch the videos. And of course, there's now a YouTube channel as well for the Doctor Who Target World podcast, where I shall be loading up the audio version of this podcast later. So anyway, what we're going to discuss this week? Well, we're going to discuss Warriors Gate, the uh, 1981 fifth Tom Baker story of season 18. Uh, it deals this whole concept of slavery in a bit of a complicated way. We have a stellar starship where these time waves are sort of battering the TARDIS and any way they can be sort of saved from being destroyed is by this sort of slave foe who can sort of escape through time because of his special skills. It doesn't really make much sense for episode one and two, in my opinion, and was a bit slow. There's a lot going on. If you read the audiobook or listen to the audiobook, I should say, it fills it out completely and you get a lot more from it that way. And uh, John Coleshill's great reading of it makes it sound really good. His uh, Doctor Who, Tom Baker impression is fantastic, a lot better than mine, I just did then. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's well worth watching, listening to. Um, I think the episodes look better now. We have the Blu-ray reconstructions, which look really good on the Blu-ray box set that came out recently. Yeah, it's, I think it's worth a watch just to see how things back then were starting to get better, I think. The way they changed the music at the beginning of the season 18, and John Nathan Turner was trying to put his stamp on it, basically. So we uh, have those sort of new features. We have the removal of old companions. Now, this is uh, Lara Ward as Romana, the second's final story. And there's a nice ending with the Doctor at the end of this, where so he decides to stay in E space and not come back to N space. So that's very nicely done. K9 is just basically annoying for the whole of this. And you can see why um, apparently Tom Baker had a bit of a swearing rant about him by halfway through recording these episodes. I think these episodes were a bit of a struggle for Tom Baker. He was beginning to have enough for his um, doctor by now, I think. And so that's why I think the other reason they got rid of John Leeson as K-9 through these episodes as well. So I think that's worth it. Adric comes sort of fall into his own sort of rights in the next story. It's his State of Decay, a very good vampire story. If you haven't seen it, well worth a watch. Um, yeah, I think overall the story is a bit too complex. It has too much going on. For episodes one and two, I, admit I watched it with the commentary and it still didn't make much sense. Episode three starts to pick up. And then in episode four, there are a lovely explosion, which is the... Um, New 5.1 soundtrack, what's on the Blu-ray, it makes it sound really good and looks not too bad. And the ending with Amana is quite sad. So, yeah, episode four is well worth a watch. And, yeah, I think the audiobook's not bad. Again, it's still too complicated. It's about four hours, and I have to admit I didn't finish it because it's just very drawn out. There are some lovely wording in it and sort of descriptions of the sort of how they like to be sort of Edwardian and try and get that sort of feel of nature back with their sort of robot warrior sort of they had you know do everything on the spaceship basically but you can see the whole nasty the decay is described beautifully by john coleshaw and there's some nice bits with um john leeson as k9 also in the audiobook and the background soundscape is um well done you get lots of nice sort of noises and robot noises and guns and all that sort of stuff so it's, i think it's well worth a listen but hopefully i'll try again and get to the end i'd like to see how he does the you know sort of romana staying in e space sort of thing so overall, I'd probably give the audiobook a seven because of John Coleshill's performance. I'd give the, I have to say, two episodes probably about a five because they weren't that great. Well, uh, as I said, this is the 11th of April and we now move on to the news, what's happening out there in the world of Doctor Who and a little bit of science fiction day because there has been a rather big announcement in the science fiction movie world. And that is that we have a teaser trailer for Star Wars Episode Nine, and finally a title. It is called Rise of the Skywalker, as it's the final part of the whole Skywalker story. And personally, I think it looked rather good. I think J.J. Abrams is going to go back to the whole theory of you know Ray being a Skywalker, I think, by the end of it. It looks very nice. It's got the beautiful blue lightsaber Anakin Skywalker had, so I'm being very nerdy here in describing it, but it looked great. Uh, I managed to cast it on YouTube, so I had a 4K um, look at it on the big screen of the living room, and it sounded amazing, like all Skywalker sound does. So, yeah, it's well worth having a look. It's all over YouTube, so you can find it there. Anyway, um, 
What else has been happening in the Doctor Who world? Well, BigFinish.com brought out Ravenous Free, the third part of their big Paul McGann master plan, which is um, they come to an end in October when he meets Eric Roberts' master. Oh, I can't wait for that, and it'll be the first time since the TV movie he's met him. But in Ravenous Free, the Ravenous, or these very scary things, or even scare Time Lords, are coming ahead with their plan. Even the 11th, who is this multi-stranded Time Lord, has always 11 regenerations in his head, um, which are very good. Um, Mark Bonner plays him very well. Um, Paul McGann has a great cast of his companions from Nell. That's uh, Liv Chenka and Hattie Moran's character. And it's still gone out of my head, her name. So let me know on the Twitter page. It's just gone out of my head. That's at, at Who Target, capital W, capital T. Yeah, and also they've brought back for this, uh, they've brought back India Fisher as Charlie, you know, Paul McGann's main companion for the years. And his new one from the Time War, Bliss, who's played by Raheem Phoenix. I always pronounce her surname wrong. She was... Um, in EastEnders for years, and she is brilliant. She's a fantastic actress, whatever she does. So, yeah, that's well worth a listen. Um, I believe Titan Comics have just brought out a new bits of artwork for their 13th Jodie Whittaker Time Lord uh, graphic novels they have out. I think they're also bringing out a free uh, comic for Comic Day. Uh, also, I believe that Candy Jar Books have brought out a short story from their Lethbridge Stewart series you can get online, because it being Easter in the UK. Um, yeah, I think that's all on the Who thing. Oh, unless you want to buy some psychic paper, I think there's a replica of the psychic paper out. Uh, that's all really on the news this week. If there's anything you think we should be mentioning, please tweet us at Who Target, capital W, capital T, or on the Facebook page. It's always a good place to get a hold of me. Right, so what have I been watching, listening? Um, well, I've been watching the dramas I've been watching because they keep going on. That's Pose, which is fantastic. Uh, 1980s America throughout the HIV crisis there and all the sort of Bolivar stuff. It looks beautiful. It's got a great cast. Uh, Mother, Father, Son, the Richard Gere drama. Why on earth did Richard Gere not do more nasty characters? He's fantastic as this sort of Murdoch mogul character who knows everything about everything. Also, Sarah Lancashire is very nasty in it as a sort of very close to Theresa May sort of politician. It's well worth a watch. Uh, I've also, thanks to a recommendation from Toby Haydock, who was on the podcast recently, been watching the whole of Ricky Gervais's comedy Afterlife. Quite a hard watch, but well worth listen. And in relation to that, I also sat down and watched The Dirt, which is the... Uh, whole backstory to Motley Crue, um, you know, the, the rock group from America. Quite a hard watch as it deals with a lot of Nikki Six's drug taking, heroin overdoses, so it has quite a hard watch. And um, also their lead singer Vincent's uh, daughter dying in hospital, I think from cancer at the time. So it's a pretty hard watch, but it's well worth it because you feel pretty good afterwards. Uh, also because of Michelle Gomez, I've been watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch on Netflix. But as I said, if there's anything you think I should be watching, just let me know. I'd like to watch anything. I'm pretty open when it comes to that. So uh, tweet me at who Twitter. That's capital W, capital T. Um, yeah, let me know. Uh, Music-wise, I got today the new Chemical Brothers album, which is absolutely fantastic. I think it's personally as good as Dig My Own Hole, which is their very first album. It's called No Geography. It's full of little tweaks. There's dance hall in it. There's classical. There's electro pop. There's stuff that will blow your ears off with um, bass. It's just fantastic. I've also got the uh, reissue of the Nirvana album for uh, just about there. It's from a 1993 concert, I think. One of the last ones Kurt Cobain did. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, I also got the Pet Shop Boys live album in. The Royal Albert Hall in London. No, not the Royal. I'm not saying it. it's the Royal. It's the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden in London. That's what I love about uh, Apple Music. There's so much on that you can get every Friday. Well worth um getting if you haven't got. Oh um by the way, the Warriors Gate audiobook is from Audible.co.uk, Audible.com, and the Blu-ray is from Amazon.co.uk or .com. The season 18th box set, which I don't think is available any longer because it went pretty quickly. Anyway, so that's all for the moment. If you want anything more video-wise, just let me know. Please uh, hit the like here, and of course hit the like button on YouTube. If you're not watching on YouTube, then please do. And I hope you can see me, as this is my first time of doing a Facebook Live video. And uh, joys of being blind, don't know if it's coming out right, don't know if you can see me or not, but just let me know. All comments are welcome. So yeah, please like here, or watch the YouTube video channel. Look at the uh, iTunes, we're on iTunes for the podcast, so please rate and review if you download that way, or for Spotify, TuneIn, Mixcloud. We are everywhere, and we intend to be everywhere, so 
enjoy, listen, and let me know your feelings at Who Target. That's uh, capital W, capital T, or on the Facebook page, which is dot Who Target World. And we hope you enjoy. Thanks very much for watching, and enjoy. Recording. Live. Do you want to add Marcus Gibbons in this video? Kevin Bromfield is watching. Michelle Carville, formats, button, creative tools, live camera, flashlight, select, invite, button, invite to go, lock, tag, button, comment, button, finish, button.